I don't know what I did to make everybody I don't know what I did to make everybody everybody I don't know what I did to make everybody everybody I don't know what I did to make everybody I don't know what I did to make everybody hate me. Oh, nigga, hey, Chris. The slip of my tongue, trick the finger for fun. You know I got this trick finger, man. They know how we do it on the heat. What's up, what's up? If they come, it's the Kegel. He ain't waffles and bagels. What's up, Kegel? Don't need to worry about that stuff. Like, I had a friend, childhood friend. I, y'all heard when I say had. I had a childhood friend from College Park Project that I grew up with. His name is Miguel. I know, you know, everybody in the hood know homie. That's that's our brother or whatever. And when we was younger, but when I say you ain't no come older now, but when we was younger, I say between 17 and 20. And Miguel is a year and a half older than me. You know what I'm saying? We went to... School to day count, seeing each other every day, down there for our lives. And um, when we between seventeen and eighteen, when we on the hilltop, I'm thugging it. Um, somebody, you know, it was said on the streets, you know what I'm saying, that he was in the old apartments, you know, down on that set, and. And I don't even want to put that on my homies down there. I, I don't know where he was really, but I know he was with a few of the guys and it was said that somebody put something into his weed. You know what I'm saying? And it freaked him out. It freaked him out so bad to like, you know, he took off his clothes and went and jumped in like the nearby creek. Um, He got, I think, spray paint and just sprayed his body red Things of that nature. Um, unfortunately, you know, of course, all this activity from him, you know, get get out for us to hear it and see it. And then, you know, of course, he's at home with his mom and his little sister. Big shots out, little sis, I love you. Tell your mom I said, hey. And um, they, they end up, you know, well, he end up in, like, Georgia Regional. You know, that's a mental hospital down here in Georgia for those who don't know. And um, once he came home from that place, he was not the same friend that I grew up with because of the medication that he was on. And the medication really had him stiff, slowed down. I remember he couldn't stretch his arms out. So his arm used to be like this all the time. Like that, he might say, Tree, let me get a cigarette. And when he talked, he, he used to slog right here. Like, tree, you don't get a cigarette, tree. I'd be like, man, wipe your face, man. You know, like that right now, because he was my homie and he from the projects. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't no robber or no drug dealer or none of that. He was just a friend. And I used to see him, you know, because he was, you know, he had to take the medicine, so it kept him, you know. And I think he was, you know, had some schizophrenia type thing. I really don't know, you know. I don't know what he was diagnosed with. But I know that the medicine that he was on, I felt because he could understand you. He wanted a cigarette. Let me get a drink, you know, or whatever. He'll leave from the projects, kind of pull up projects, and walk up to our project, the Hilltop. And um, I always just seen that he was there. It was just he was inside, like inside. He couldn't move. He couldn't get out. So... I used to, when I used to say him, I used to always say, and Jehovah God, hear me. He know I'm telling the truth when I say this. I used to always say, Miguel, man, it's the drugs, man. You you actually okay. You got to stop taking that medicine. And, 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 I, and I'm not the one to tell you to stop taking some medicine that a doctor gave you, prescribed you, that will help you and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? I would just, well, I just knew that he was still there inside and the medicine had him trapped. I knew that whatever they gave him and freaked him out, it was whatever it was, it was it was temporarily. 
You know what I'm saying? And I don't think that they thought that it was temporary. So they put him on these meds and, you know, I don't know. But he was on it and he acted that way for a long time. He was a nice basketball player and he couldn't play ball with us no more when we went to Brady Gym. So, you know, he used to come and he used to just be, you know, running up and down the court, you know, saying stuff. And, you know, you can't shoot, tree, tree, drop you, drop it, you. Yeah. And he was, ah, ah. So we just, you know, it just wasn't him. But every day I seen him, man, to my for like two years or so, man, I used to tell him, don't take, start taking medicine. Hide the medicine, take the medicine. And, I, you know, at, after about a year or two of saying that to him, I started to question myself, oh, am I telling him the right thing? You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to do nothing to hurt him. I'll get him in any trouble with the doctor, the parents, or, you know, anything, man. I ain't want him to hurt nobody, hurt himself. I don't know. I was just feeling that don't take the medicine. Don't take the medicine. I kept saying to him. And then all of a sudden, without me and my cousin them who loved him, um, Hilltop, knowing he had stopped taking the medicine. I don't know how. Like, was he hiding it like that? But what's crazy is all of a sudden, you know, over a six, eight-month period of time, he was back, y'all. He was back to my life. Act the exact same way he did when he was little to the older. And he was back and. You no know, play some basketball and he went stiff no more. And think about it, he was like this for, you know what I'm saying, two, three years with the medicine slug out of his mouth and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So now he he back. Tree, what's up, man? And listen to this, y'all. We used to be at my cousin's store on the hilltop, Charles Stoke, Charles. Ask you, I love you, Charles. And when he used to come up and we he back down, we talking and smoking a blunt or something, just kicking a bobo, talking about anything in the world. I used to bring it up because I wanted my credit on that. I used to bring it up while everybody right down like Nigel. Tell these people what your boy used to tell you. Then he was like, man, Tree, all that time, man, Tree was telling me, start taking the medicine, y'all. He was like, man, no Tree, dude. I was like, man, I'm dead. I used to tell him that for years. And he started taking medicine. Here he is. He was just like the regular old friend, y'all. He's real talk, man. Uh, he worked at a car wash, one of the car washes that was on Main, well, yeah, Main Street. East Point, like right on the borderline of East Point of College Park, I meaning one foot over one foot. You in East Point of College Park. He worked at the car wash, but it was in East Point. And he worked there for years doing his thing, having money. It was like he was me, you know, the regular guy just living. And um then, you know, like my brother got killed and you know, he and he was on, you know, he he you know, he he heel type associate. You know, he got associates everywhere else through the hood, everybody love him and stuff. But, you know, we treated him like we was brought up to treat you. You know what I'm saying? So he got nothing but love from he to talk us. You know what I'm saying? So as time, you know, Maine died, that, he didn't like that. And he used to say stuff to me in my ear, you know, but, you know, what it is. You know what I'm saying? And um, with that being said, man, you know, the hood flipped over, new people coming, this person dying, this, 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 this. And he found himself like more hanging down on with the guys that sell dope, but sell dope right in front of the bootleggers and all that, you know, the houses. So he started drinking a little, not not nothing real heavy or nothing, but he drinking a little and whatnot. And somehow, man, he was in, intoxicated or sick. You know, I, I don't really don't know which one. I had to, you know, try to get contact with my partner sister man but somehow he was sick man and he fainted you know in the projects you know this is you know a few months back to just happen he fainted and in front of everybody the drug dealers but it's the young cats really you know because he my age he an OG nigga <clears throat> so he end up collapsing or something and while he's down on the ground some of the guys out there, you know, get up, what's well, wrong with you, boy, you know, like that. And they get some liquor, you know what I'm saying? You know, this bootleg house, so we talking about, you know, some seagum gin, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, man. But they start pouring it in his mouth, man, while he was unconscious or while he was fainting, you know, things of that nature. And he took a turn for the worse from right there, man, like, the ambulance was called because he wasn't responding at all. They take him on. He go into a coma, and he end up dying, man. And what's crazy, you know, I heard that it was pouring water, and it, you know, trying to wake him up. But then, you know, a few years later, I mean, 
a few months later, then I hear what really happened and, you know, a certain person or people was pouring alcohol playing, you know, he, he done passed out. He started pouring alcohol in the homie mouth or, you know, messing with us, you know, toothpaste in the ear, you don't mess with him like that. They weren't intending to do none of that, but whatever they pulled, if it was water, if it was alcohol, they pulled it all in his face, nose, mouth, you know, wherever it went, it could have just went in his mouth, but he's not conscious. I don't think that anybody that's not conscious should have any liquids pulled in their mouth, man. And my and my my friend passed away, man. And like he he went, you know, from what we knew, he went sick or that. Like he didn't have cancer. He didn't none of that. You know what I'm saying? I think he got on got too drunk, or you know somebody don't gave him a pill, and you know he really you know don't do drugs like that or whatever. But I I just know he was unconscious. And y'all who watching this out there, who seen it and know what really happened, know what really happened. You know, y'all might can tell me something. I don't, you know, put it in my comment, let me know. I didn't have a story right or something. You know, it's fine. But I know he was down. Some liquid was pulled in his mouth. He took a turn for the worst, went in a coma, and now my partner dead. And y'all stop playing with me, man. Y'all talking about y'all G's and. And, and 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 big homies and care about the hood, man. For real, bro. Y'all know how I rock, man. Say something. We live right here on Underground Source TV. OG Black Boy, no Don Trees. Call it Paul, stand up. I don't know what I did to make everybody. Everybody. I don't know what I did to make everybody. I don't know what I did to make everybody hate everybody hate I don't know what I did to make everybody hate I don't know what I did to make everybody hate The slip of my tongue, trick the finger for fun. You know I got this trick finger, man. They know how we do on the heat. What's up? What's up? Is it coming, Kegel? He ain't waffles and bagels. What's up, Kegel?